In this lesson, I'll briefly point out the CSS properties that are unique to lists and tables. Uh, pretty simple ideas. I just want to be thorough and create a little cheat sheet for myself so I really understood the options for these. Again, I encourage you to do the same. Uh, take a look at lesson 15.html available to you for download wherever you downloaded or are watching this video right now. And what I did here was merely uh, look at all of the list and table specific uh, CSS properties and then exercise them in a number of, of little examples. Uh, so what I want to do also is open up this in notepad so we can take a look at the styles. Now I did cheat a little bit here with the table uh, because it got a little hairy to put all this stuff inside uh, the table definitions themselves. So just keep that in mind that I have table 1, table 2, table 5, table 6 defined. I also have some specific things like first row and call first column and we'll We'll dissect these in just, a, in just a moment. For the list items, notice that I'm using the style attribute and then defining the styles uh, uh, in line like so. So let's go ahead and start with the lists. And notice that uh, by default, whenever we create an unordered list, the list style type is uh, disk. But there are other options as well that we can set, like none, for example. And we use none whenever we want to use uh, the unordered list items as a horizontal menu. Uh, so we've already seen how to do this in lesson three whenever we took our unordered list, made it into a horizontal listing, removed the bullet points. So that's what setting list style type to none will do for us, remove the bullet points from our list items. Uh, also, you can see there's a circle square, decimal leading zero, upper Roman, upper alpha, and so we can create a pretty rich indentation scheme uh, using list items, which is awfully neat. There's also the ability to create a custom uh, list item. So using the list style image, we can use an image instead. Uh, so I just use a URL with an open and close parentheses and then point to a valid URL. We talked about place kitten in the previous lesson, so I'm just using a 10 by 10 place kitten and a 50 by 50 place kitten to show uh, how each of them kind of could be used in, uh, in a series of uh, list items. Also, line style position, whether we want to be on the outside or the inside of an imaginary indentation line uh, with the bullet itself. And then I demonstrate uh, a shortcut for list style so that you can kind of put all of these on one line instead of separating them out into separate uh, CSS property definitions. All right, uh, so that's it with lists, pretty simple stuff. Tables are a bit more complex because of how many optional parts there are. As I note on the web page itself in this little explanatory section, I said uh, basically that great table design is really the domain of a talented designer. However, it's important to know what your options are when you're trying to match a designer's stylings. So let's take a look at the examples that I put together here and let's scroll down to the first example in our source. And here we are. Okay, so I have a table with an ID of table one. I've created a caption uh, and then I create a row with several, uh, it looks like three columns another row with three columns. So it's a very simple table. And if we take a look at the stylings for this in table one, we're simply putting a one pixel solid black border around it. So let's see, that goes around the entire table itself. Let's kind of put these side by side, if we can. Uh, border spacing of 1.5 EM. So every time there's a, a border involved, it will create an extra space. And then I'm also setting the caption side to the bottom, which is neat, all right? So let's compare that with table two. Now let's take a look at the source for table two here. All right, and table two is almost identical in structure. In fact, it is identical. The only thing that changed was the um, the settings for each of the individual data cells. So you'll notice here that, uh, as it says, I apply a one pixel border 
around each of the cells and I set the border spacing to one pixel. So the space in between each of the cells called the, uh, the border has a one pixel boundary. And as this points out, this could be removed using the tables cell spacing equals zero attribute. So if we were to go down on table two and add an attribute, cell spacing ah, equals zero. Let's see what that'll do for us. And you can see we get the border, but we get no space in between. All right, so let me go ahead and remove that and just put it back to its original state here. And moving on to example number three, it says here I'm applying a background color to an entire row. Notice that we still have the one pixel border space like we did and we fixed just a moment ago. And it says we'll fix that in the next example. So uh, in table number three, let's look and see what's different about it. Uh, notice that the first row has a class called first row. That's about the only thing that's different. And then we defined the tr.first row to have a, a border around it, set the border spacing, but then also set the back color to that medium gray color. Right, and that's what we get. So that's how we were to um, define a color for one r entire row. Here we're going to work with an entire column. And I think, if memory serves me correctly, that looks a little bit different. So let's go down to example number four. And notice here we have a series of columns defined. And I didn't talk about call groups and columns, but it is a way to, um, uh, to define up front the various columns that will then be used by the TDs and THs inside of each of our TRs in the body of our table. Uh, so I call the first column, I give it a class name of first column, and then give the last column a class of last column, and then I style up the first column, like so. So here again, set the border, and then the background color, and that allows us to style, uh, to set an entire column's background color, okay? Finally, let's go, or I guess we're nearing the end here. In examples five and six, we play with the border collapse attribute, setting it to uh, separate, uh, to separate will double the borders between the cells. So notice how thick the borders are between each of the cells. And the reason is because we set the border collapse to separate in table five, but we set it to collapse in table six. So the difference between the two is in separate, let each of the borders be rendered out, but when it's collapsed, if there are two borders that are bo um, butted up next to each other, only represent one border. So that's the difference between having a two pixel and a one pixel border, all things uh, being equal. All right, and like I said, there are so many variations and so many additional things that we can set uh, with regards to the, the T body T head, T foot, uh, call group calls, um, and so on, not to mention IDs and classes that there's a lot of different ways to slice and dice tables. And it really is a matter of your imagination how you want to render and represent tabular data on screen. Okay, so that's all I have to say about lists and tables or styling them up with CSS properties. We'll continue on in the next video. We'll see you there. Thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you.